So this question <clears throat> looks like it's a diagram question. We have this graph here. So anytime I see a graph or a table or a chart, right, anything that's visual, I like to take five seconds or so and just make sure, like, you know, I pay attention to what is even going on with that picture or that diagram. So the best places to look initially are the axes and the title. There's no title on this graph. So it looks like my x-axis is population density, and I'm told how to find that people per square mile of land area. And then my y-axis is relative housing cost. And I can kind of tell that so as the population and density goes up, right, so as it increases, so too does the relative housing cost, which makes sense, All right? Supply and demand. Um, we do have points all over this line, so this is probably a line of best fit. And another little strategy I like to use is something called the pinpoint method. So if I point out this circle right here, this dot right here, I like to ask myself, what does that dot right there mean? Because if I can interpret what that dot means, it pretty much means I understand the entire graph. So this dot is telling me that when the population is about, I don't know, 8,000, 7,000, when the population is around, let's say, 8,000, then the relative housing cost is 250 oh, percent of national average. Okay, so at that population density, the relative housing cost is 250 percent. So now I go back to reading. So the relative housing cost for a U.S. city is defined to be the ratio of this. So make sure I don't forget that that's there, expressed as a percent. Down here, the scatter plot above shows the relative housing cost and the population density for several large U.S. cities in the year 2005. The line of best fit is also shown and has an equation. I always like to write down the equation. Y equals 0.0125x plus 61. Which of the following best explains how the number 61 in the equation relates to the scatter plot? Well, first of all, the number 61 in this equation, right? Is, this is in y equals mx plus b form, right? So I always pay attention to that because it typically is important to know. b represents the y-intercept, which means in this equation, 61 represents the y-intercept. Now, our y-axis is relative housing cost, right, as a percent of national average cost. So if the y-intercept is at 61, that tells me that the population density of zero has a relative housing cost that is 61% of national average cost. So even in a town that doesn't have any people, right, which is kind of a weird thing to think about, but that's kind of how we have to think about it based upon the wording here. If there's no population, then the relative housing cost doesn't go down to zero. It's still just 61% of the national average, right? So, or, or at least maybe zero or one or uh, this very low number is 61% of the national average average. So I do all that thinking about what this means before I look at the answer choices, because when there's a lot of words on this test, uh, they like to try to trap you with things that seem to be right or are very close to being right, but not quite right. So answer choice A says in 2005, the lowest housing cost in the United States was about $61 per month. Not at all, because again, our Y axis has to do with percent relative housing cost as a percent, not dollars. So choice B, in 2005, the lowest housing cost in the United States was about 61% of the highest housing cost. Well, that's closer. It is at least a percent. But again, the y-axis has nothing to do with the highest housing cost. It has something to do with the national average cost. So B is out. Choice C, in 2005, even in cities with low population densities, housing costs were never below 61% of the national average. Well, that's pretty... Good. I like that answer, right? We can't go lower than zero in terms of population density, which means we could say that they were never below 61%. So I like choice C. And then choice D in 2005, even in cities with low population densities, housing costs were likely at least 61% of the national average. So uh, let's see. I like D better than C, and here's why. So as much as initially when I read C, I felt like this use of the word never below was fine. But again, out, because of practice on this test, uh, when I look at choice D and see that it's pretty much the exact same answer, 
except for the words never below. And we're just likely at least, right? So likely at minimum, the 61%. I'm going to always choose the more general answer than the greater specific answer, um, just because that's how the test is written up. And it's hard for me to prove based upon the information provided that it's never below 61%. Right, like that's where the line goes, but there's no dot there. So the line of best fit does not control, as we can see, right? The line is here, but we have dots below it. We have actual data points below. We have actual data points above. So because of the strong language, right? So avoid strong language on this test, right? Things like never are typically gonna be wrong, right? If I'm running out of time and I see never, I just cross it out. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this was useful.